Welcome to the Jersey Pulse, your guide to South Jersey and the rest of the Garden State. I'm CBS News Philadelphia South Jersey reporter Brandon Goldner, and each week we bring you stories that are at the heart of your community. Let's get to this week's stories. The suspect in the murder of three people in Bucks County will not fight extradition from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. Andre Gordon Jr. appeared via video in a Mercer County court. He's charged with killing his stepmother, teenage sister, and the mother of his children in Falls Township on March 16th. Gordon was taken into custody in Trenton soon afterwards. Bucks County authorities say they hope Gordon will be back in Pennsylvania sometime next week to face the murder charges. A close-knit South New Jersey community is grieving the loss of a Washington Township High School student. Sophomore Sophia Bennett was killed in a two-car crash Friday night. The crash happened at Hearthville and Deptford Center Roads in Deptford, New Jersey. Bennett was a passenger in one of the cars. The 17-year-old driver of the car was seriously injured. The 27-year-old driver in the second car was also hurt in the crash. There's no word yet on what led up to the collision. Well, there's a new effort to make a busy South Jersey road safer. A $400,000 initiative aims to reduce vehicle crashes and deaths along the White Horse Pike in Camden County. Since November, four pedestrians have been killed along a stretch of the road in Waterford Township. There are also seven deadly car crashes throughout 2023. The safety initiative includes increased patrols that will target aggressive and distracted drivers. We as drivers have to make safety our priority by slowing down, paying attention to the road in front of us, and eliminating unnecessary distractions like cell phones. We can greatly reduce the number of preventable accidents. The initiative will also focus on increasing seatbelt use and pedestrian safety. The port in Baltimore is temporarily shut down. It's one of the largest on the eastern seaboard. Some of the cargo bound for Baltimore is now being diverted to our area. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Dan Snyder shows us how local leaders are preparing for that extra workload. And I was like, oh my God. That, that's catastrophic. Andy Saparito says he was heading out the door when his wife called him back in to see the video of the Key Bridge collapse. Since then, he says officials at the South Jersey Port Corporation have been contacting customers and taking on cargo originally bound for Baltimore. We've already had confirmations from three different customers that uh, they'll be bringing ships into to Camden uh, probably over the next uh, two weeks. Saparito says they have some capacity right now, around a million square feet of warehouse space, but cautions they could end up taking on more than just those three ships as more companies continue to evaluate their options. You have to look at what you, what you have coming in, uh, what your inventory is in, in, in your space, and how much you can accommodate. Across the river, a Philiport official tells me they have a few diversions scheduled from Baltimore. That spokesperson says they do have some capacity and stand ready to help. But it won't just be our local ports picking up extra work. Here in South Philly, one trucking company says they've been getting a lot of calls. It's been constant, you know, emails, calls. It's just been nonstop since it happened. IBV has terminals in several major East Coast ports, including Philly and Baltimore. Manager Justin Parent says the closure from the Key Bridge collapse means more work for drivers in our area. We're going to have to uptick our driver count to be able to handle that volume. Um, and, you know, there's going to be delays at the port that we're anticipating. Parent and Saparito both say they think local ports can handle the increased volume in the short term, but there are concerns the longer the closure lasts. If it becomes a long term thing, then, you know, we're going to start seeing congested roadways. We're going to start seeing just longer wait times in the port, and it's just going to, it's going to kind of snowball from there. Dan Snyder, CBS News, Philadelphia. A wave of luxury car theft says police on high alert. According to investigators, this month, these have already already broken into at least three homes in neighborhoods throughout South Jersey and have stolen luxury vehicles. CBS Philadelphia South Jersey reporter Brandon Goldner spoke to one of the victims who was home with his pregnant wife when the thieves broke in. Home surveillance video captures the moments when Harrison Township police say a group of thieves broke into Dr. Scott Hollander's house early last Wednesday. He says his wife, who's nine months pregnant, heard the group rummage through their house and jolted him awake. And said, here, there's some, there are people in the house. You know, I was startled. I, I, I told her, call 911, and I tried to grab some something to defend myself. Police say the thieves grabbed Dr. Hollander's wallet and car keys, driving off with his 2021 Range Rover Sport. The Hollanders say the experience. Experience left them traumatized. She didn't go to sleep till about 
like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning the day after, just waiting for that time to pass in her mind and made her feel more comfortable. Harrison Township police say thieves are targeting luxury cars, not just in the township, but across the state, and they're warning homeowners to be vigilant. Washington Township and Mantua police both say similar burglaries occurred this month in their jurisdictions, in which thieves broke into homes to search for keys to luxury cars. No arrests have been made in those cases. Clive Wayne is part of a company that recovers stolen vehicles and he says some of the smartest ways to protect your cars are low-tech solutions and ironically go back to some of the physical measures that we saw from yesteryear such as steering locks crook locks good cctv meanwhile dr hollander's family has already taken steps to fortify their home it's an adjustment like you're not the same you're just not the same you're not at the same piece and you're um you're now thinking about things that you took for granted. Police say they found Dr. Hollander's car in Hillside, New Jersey, the same day it was stolen. And investigators say they've identified a potential suspect in the case, but no arrests have been made. Brandon Goldner, CBS News, Philadelphia. A jewelry heist down the shore. Thieves cut a hole into a wall, sneak into a jewelry store, and get away with about a million dollars worth of stolen goods. It all happened at the Ocean County Mall, and we're told those thieves also use a torch to get into a safe. Here's South Jersey reporter Brandon Goldner. Tom's River Police say sometime Wednesday night into Thursday morning inside the Ocean County Mall. At least one thief broke into Venzio Jewelers by first cutting a hole in the wall of an adjacent empty storefront. Investigators say they then snipped the phone and alarm cables and then used a torch to break into a large safe and steal a million dollars worth of jewelry. <laughs> Tom's River Police say no officers were available to talk to us about the case on camera, including whether they had any leads. Caught me by surprise. I didn't know about it till you told me. Fred, who declined to give his last name, says crime doesn't usually happen in the mall area. Obviously, it was well planned. That was for sure. They knew exactly what they were doing. It wasn't a spur of the moment. It took some time to decide how to get in there and, and make the robbery successful. Big surprise. I saw that on the uh, internet. Tom Atani also believes whoever planned the heist was extremely knowledgeable. Where they broke in from the next door, empty store, go through the wall, and they know what they were doing. So the mall was open Friday, but Venzio remained closed, though a handful of employees were inside the store. We spoke briefly to someone inside the jewelry store who said they didn't want to talk at this time. Brandon Goldner, CBS News, Philadelphia. New York, it's on track to become the first U.S. city with congestion tolls on drivers entering its central business district. Transit officials approved a fee of up to $15 for most motorists headed into the busiest part of Manhattan. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority Board voted to approve the fee, which is expected to go into effect in June. Tolls will vary based on the time of day and the size of the vehicle. In the One of the biggest goals of this whole exercise is to finally attack congestion, but the other side of the equation is to invest more in transit. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy is suing to stop the MTA congestion pricing plan. In a statement, he said this is far from over and will continue to fight this blatant cash grab. The state's first lady, Tammy Murphy, has announced she is suspending her campaign. Congrats Murphy had been in a heated there. primary with South Jersey Congressman Andy Kim for the Democratic nomination. She also had the support of many influential party leaders and secured the crucial party line placement on the June 4th primary ballot. Andy Kim, backed by grassroots and progressive Democrats, is now the favorite to win the Democratic nomination. It's clear to me that continuing in this race will involve waging a very divisive and negative campaign, which I am not willing to do. And with Donald Trump on the ballot and so much at stake for our nation, I will not, in good conscience, waste resources tearing down a fellow Democrat. On the Republican side, South Jersey businessmen Curtis Bashaw, Christine Serrano Glasner, and Peter Valorosi are competing for the nomination. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez, who is facing federal bribery charges, announced he will not run for re-election in the Democratic primary for his U.S. Senate seat. Unfortunately, the present accusations I am facing, of which I am innocent and will prove so, will not allow me to have that type of dialogue and debate with political opponents that have already made it the cornerstone of their campaign. New Jerseyans deserve better than that. 
Menendez has said that he is hopeful that his exoneration will take place this summer and will allow him to pursue his candidacy as an independent in the general election. Menendez has denied the charges against him and has refused to resign. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of the Jersey Pulse after this break. Welcome back. The Jersey Pulse continues. The Kemen Fire Unions are calling it a crisis, with union presidents saying lives are at risk because of ongoing mechanical issues with the city's fire trucks. New Jersey reporter Ryan Hughes has their plea for better equipment after a recent fire turned deadly. As flames poured out of a second floor window with a man trapped inside, the president of the Camden City Firefighters Union says crews had to stop and wait because of a mechanical issue that caused the hose on the fire truck to go flat. At some point, the hose went limp. There was no water pressure and there was a, a scramble to uh, determine what was the problem. The fire happened Friday morning on the 900 block of Newton Avenue. Investigators are still working to determine how the man died, but Pete Perez says the faulty equipment delayed his firefighters response. It's unacceptable uh, and, what, and what we do as a union is to make sure our working conditions are up to par, that they're to the standard of, of being able to do our job effectively. The union president argues the lives of firefighters and everyone living in the city are at risk. He says more than 50% of the fire engines in the city have failed a critical pump test and repairs are backlogged with only one certified mechanic to fix the trucks. That's unacceptable, man. Maintenance, better maintenance for that, you know. You uh, definitely want to make sure everything's Everything's good before you even come out. In a statement, the city of Camden told CBS News Philadelphia it acknowledges some fire trucks have experienced mechanical issues in recent months. The city says it has since ordered three new trucks for the department. New mechanic positions have been posted to help with repairs, and the city entered into a contract with a new vendor to do specialized repair work. Steps needed, Perez says, to help keep the city safe. Time and seconds of what we do matter especially when it comes to life safety. The union president says he wants the city to be more proactive and he also wants to meet with city leaders to discuss a comprehensive plan to address the mechanical issues moving forward. In Camden, Ryan Hughes, CBS News Philadelphia. Well, we're now hearing from the first responders who helped save a puppy from New Jersey whose head got stuck in a tire rack. Yeah, we showed this photo of Daisy last week. The yellow lab got her head stuck in the tire rim in her family's backyard in Franklinville. Her owner called the volunteer fire department for help. They tried using dish soap and water to free the pup. When that didn't work, they took Daisy to one of the firefighters' garages. They use plasma cutters to cut the rim while protecting and shielding Daisy from the flying sparks with a tarp. The main concern was making sure she wouldn't get burnt because it does throw sparks and everything. A race against time, you know, her eyes were turning red. She was kind of gasping for air a little bit. Well, Daisy was freed and unharmed and has happily accepted her new role as the fire company's <laughs> new mascot. Doesn't she look great? Yeah, all's well that ends well. How truly. about it? The Big J is docked in South Philadelphia at the Navy Yard, but not before drawing some big crowds on the Garden State side of the river. Here's New Jersey reporter Ryan Hughes. While passing the Red Bank battlefield, onlookers lined New Jersey side of the Delaware River to catch a glimpse of the nation's most decorated battleship. Well, it's, it's certainly something that you don't see every day, and uh, especially to see a large military ship like that in motion, it's uh, kind of a, a great opportunity. The battleship New Jersey back on the move, this time headed to the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard, where it will be dry docked for preventative maintenance, a historic moment that hasn't happened in 30 years. It's a pretty great thing. It's always been kind of near and dear to my heart with uh, with my dad helping to build the, uh, the ship. The battleship New Jersey launched on the first anniversary of Pearl Harbor and has been a floating museum in Camden since 2001. Last week, the ship was moved to the Paulsboro Marine Terminal, where it was balanced before the dry dock process. At the shipyard, the battleship's hull will be repainted and thousands of parts will be replaced. The ship's CEO says the move to South Philly was smooth, and more than 1,600 tickets have already been sold for tours on weekends in April and May when it's not being worked on. It will be your chance to not come aboard the ship, but come underneath of the ship. 
So your opportunity, once in a generation opportunity to walk underneath and touch the hull of an Iowa class battleship. The battleship was brought to dry dock number three, the same spot it was built during the 1930s. We're told the maintenance will take about 60 days. In National Park, New Jersey, Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Philadelphia. Tickets are available for tours while the USS New Jersey is in dry dock. It'll be on Saturday, April 6th. A $225 ticket gives you access to the exterior hull and up close look at the restoration work while the ship is in dry dock. Meanwhile, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy's administration has announced $3.7 million in funding for an offshore wind research and monitoring initiative. And some of the money will be used for mid-Atlantic cold pool modeling, which is a study of seasonal water mixing dynamics. Now, there will also be aerial surveys of whales as well as a satellite tagging study of their feeding patterns and movements. A little over a million dollars each will go to the expansion of an existing tracking system for birds and bats and to study focused on sea turtle behavior and health. Researchers will use this information to determine any potential risks associated with time spent by whales in wind lease areas. Well, New Jersey isn't known for maple syrup, but if one university has its way, the sticky brown stuff that you put on your pancakes will one day come from the Garden State. Thanks to a federal grant, Stockton University in Galloway Township is in its fourth year producing syrup from the 300 acres of red maple surrounding the school. Coming straight out of the tree, the sap tastes like water. It's not until it's cooked in a wood-fired stove that the sugar content soars and the color turns brown. Uh, we get a darker syrup down here in South Jersey, and I think it has a more maple flavor to it. And we also boil it over a wood stove, so I think you get a little bit of that wood fire taste into it as well. And you'll have to try it for yourself. Now I'm in the move for some waffles. The university is using the syrup in its food service program to create new flavors of salad dressing and barbecue sauce. School also sells the syrup at farmers markets. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of the Jersey Pulse after this break. Welcome back. The Jersey Pulse continues. Just one ticket matched all the numbers in Mega Millions drawing the jackpot more than $1.1 billion. It was sold at the ShopRite Liquors in Neptune, New Jersey. That's in Central Jersey, which I assure you exists. CBS News Philadelphia's Nick Dementry went to that store in Monmouth County where that winning ticket was, of course, the topic du jour. It's not any old ordinary Wednesday at ShopRite. You give me a little luck tonight. <laughs> this Neptune grocery and attached liquor store is celebrating along with their customers after someone here hit it big. I buy my lottery ticket here every day. Susan Radigan thought she could be the Mega Millions jackpot winner. I had the first number, the number seven, and I bought my ticket here. But after a second look, oh my God, my heart was going. But then the next number, I wasn't even close. She realized she won't get to cash in the largest jackpot in New Jersey lottery history, $1.13 billion. But someone else here will. I'm excited for her. I'm excited for the person that won. I wish it was me. Cashier Tayana Bambada doesn't remember exactly who she sold the winning ticket to Tuesday night, but knows it wasn't her mom. I sold her one like 30, 40, 30 40 yeah. minutes before the winning ticket. In the Garden State, winners can remain anonymous. New Jersey lottery executives say whoever it is chose the annuity option, meaning they'll get a yearly payout over 30 years. If they change their mind, the cash option pays out more than $537 million. Right now, this is the luckiest shop right in the state of New Jersey, that's for sure. It's a sentiment shared by this long line of people. Picking my winner. Here to test their luck, hoping to hit it big too. Keep on trying, you gotta be in it to win it. When Neptune and Nikki Dementry, CBS News, Philadelphia. Well, imagine working at the same place for 63 years. 99-year-old Ms. Rose Jufre did just that, working in the city clerk's office in Camden, New Jersey. Camden City officials honored Ms. Rose and presented her with a special citation as the longest working Camden City employee and the oldest retired employee as well. Ms. Rose started when she was just 16 years of age and was the deputy clerk at retirement. She shared what she liked most about working in the clerk's office. Everything. I had the best boss. I had wonderful workers and I just enjoyed it. That's why I was there so long. 
Ms. Jufre told us Franklin Roosevelt was president when she started working in Camden. She will be turning 100 years young this coming September. Well, just in time for prom season, Camden County officials are eliminating the stress for students around finding the perfect gown. The county held its second annual free prom dress giveaway. CBS Philadelphia's Aziza Shula was there as parents and teenagers said yes to the dress. Cue the music and ovation. This young lady just said yes to the dress of her prom dreams. I knew it was the one because how it fitted on me, it was very good, and I felt very beautiful. Fit her like a glove. She doesn't even have to hem it. With over 500 glamorous gowns to choose from, girls grabbed as many as their arms could hold, searching for the one that perfectly complements their body and style. Do you like that one? <laughs> I guess I'm just looking for something out of the box, you know, not like the ordinary brown dress. <laughs> This giveaway is sponsored by the Camden County Sheriff's Office, Prosecutor's Office, Board of Commissioners, Department of Corrections, and Police Department, all of which had volunteers serving as personal style consultants to the students. This is me. I'm extra, so this would be something that I would wear. <laughs> Everything in this room, from dresses and shoes to accessories and even tuxedos, is free. All generously donated by residents and businesses in the community. It feels like such a great experience. I know, like a lot of dresses are like, you know, could be like a thousand dollars or more. This is the difference between going and not going with some of the kids. So the parents have expressed that, you know, without this, they didn't know what they were going to do. And we have three, four hundred dollar dresses in here for free. Aziza Schuler, CBS News, Philadelphia. Well, Camden County Police got into the Easter spirit. The department hosted an Easter egg hunt at the Nikasita Daycare Center in East Camden. The department is hoping to build a bond with some of the youngest residents of the community in a fun event. This is part of the department's mission of community policing. Philadelphia Union defender Kai Wagner formed a special friendship with a little girl with cancer, and he was there as she celebrated a huge milestone. Before her second birthday, Charlotte was diagnosed with a high-risk form of leukemia. This week, she rang the bell at CHOP Oncology in Voorhees as she completed treatment with Wagner right there. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us for this week's Jersey Pulse. Be sure to stay with CBS News Philadelphia every week for more stories impacting the heart of your community.